Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Wi-Fi for Beginners podcast. My name is Nigel Bowden and uh, I'm presenting a series of podcasts to take you through the fundamentals of wireless LAN networking. Hopefully this will help you to build your understanding and knowledge of wireless LAN networking. I've provided a set of slides to accompany each of the episodes which you can check out along at uh, wififorbeginners.com that's the website where you find all of these slides and audio material to accompany this podcast series so that's wififorbeginners.com uh, you can listen along and hopefully uh, gain much of the understanding that you'll need from just the audio um, part of this uh, program but if you would like to have a look at the slides just to uh, have a more of an audio visual experience then uh, go along there and have a look this is actually episode two we're actually in the first module of uh, the various subjects that we'll be looking at and we're looking at the moment at what we actually mean by a Wi-Fi network and in episode one we actually had a look at a number of topics so you might if might want to pop back there have a listen to that if you haven't already heard episode one just to give you a very quick recap of what we went through uh, we took a very quick look at what we mean by a Wi-Fi network we discussed the fact that the Wi-Fi the term Wi-Fi networking uh, is a brand name of the Wi-Fi Alliance organization. We also talked about the fact that um, a wireless LAN and a Wi-Fi network are uh, two terms for the same thing. We're talking about a wireless local area network, we're talking about a Wi-Fi network, uh, we're talking about the same concept essentially. It's just that the Wi-Fi terminology, as I say, is a brand name of the Wi-Fi Alliance. Um, to qualify as a Wi-Fi network or as a wireless LAN network, uh, it must conform to the 802.11 standard, which is an IEEE standard in the same way that we have the IEEE standard for Ethernet, which is 802.3. We've got the IEEE standard 802.11 for wireless LANs. Um, we also took a look at a very uh, useful reference model, which I'm going to be referring back to throughout this series to try and understand exactly how a wireless LAN is going to hang together. So we talked about uh, a standard wired network, which is composed of the core uh, distribution and edge layers in a, in a standard wired network architecture. And we actually talked about the fact that we, uh, in a wireless network, in an enterprise environment certainly we tend to extend that standard wired network into uh, an, an extended edge model if you like where we actually add our uh, wireless access points which provide the wireless connectivity for our devices we actually extend the edge layer of our network using uh, wireless access points and as I say you can go back to uh, go back to the website uh, wi-fi for beginners com and see those uh, see those slides which includes this, this reference model that we're going to be referring back to. So if you are uh, following along with the slides we're actually up to uh, slide number 11 as we continue our discussion about exactly what is a Wi-Fi network. Um, and Wi-Fi networks, wireless LANs, whatever you want to call them, uh, deployed in many environments. Uh, these days we've got uh, education environments, which is schools and universities, we've got healthcare, which obviously includes hospitals, we've got manufacturing facilities, we've got logistics, warehousing facilities, we've got um, hospitality environments, which is a hotel and conferencing, we've got stadiums, obviously sports stadiums, we've got small, uh, medium uh, business uh, networks and we've also got the the home network and each of these environments uh, as we'll see later comes with its own requirements and challenges I mean for instance in a uh, stadium you, you're going to have very high density of users you're going to have uh, a very high number of um, devices who maybe you'll want to stream um, uh, video or potentially browse the web whereas for instance in a uh, logistics warehousing type facility you've probably got a, a smaller number of operatives who are um, moving around the the warehousing facility using much lower bandwidth much smaller number of devices who are roaming frequently between um, the wireless access points which are distributed around the uh, facility so it gives you an idea of the you know different environments can have uh, different requirements which we'll have to uh, cater for in our design which we'll have a look at in a little bit more detail later on. If we consider the main components that comprise a Wi-Fi network we've got uh, wireless access points, we've got wireless clients which tends to be things like our laptops, our tablets, smartphones, uh, we've got wireless LAN controllers potentially and we've got some sort of cable infrastructure which is, tends to be data cabling 
Um, and although we are talking about a wireless network and with wireless communications between devices, we still need to remember that there is still quite a big wired infrastructure that sits behind all of this and the uh, the wireless LAN itself is generally overlaid onto a, a wired LAN and as we talked about before um, we tend to in install wireless access points which provide the actual access mechanism onto the network giving us an extension of our edge switches and extending the whole edge of the uh, of the wired network and the job of the wireless network probably is fairly self-evident but it's worth saying is to actually convert um, client data which is sent wirelessly so maybe from our laptop or our tablet it goes over the air via wireless signals and uh, it needs to be converted back into uh, a data format which can flow across the wired network so we're essentially uh, using our wireless network to convert from wireless signals back to uh, the wired network and you can think of it as um, being analogous to just extending the uh, edge switch ports out over uh, a wireless connection so if we have a look now at what I actually mean by a wireless client we briefly touched on it and uh, a wireless client is a user device which has got Wi-Fi capability so it's a user device that can use a wireless LAN and uh, examples are things like uh, tablets, we've got smartphones, we've got wireless laptops, uh, maybe barcode scanners if you're in a, in a warehouse, maybe in a uh, medical environment you've got some sort of medical equipment, scanners, things like that. Maybe we've got security systems as well such as uh, security cameras, uh, things like that which, uh, which all connect uh, over a Wi-Fi connection, that's an 802.11 connection back to uh, a wireless network. Uh, wireless clients as well, you may also see them referred to as stations uh, when we're uh, when you're re reviewing the 802.11 standard and you know various textbooks about uh, Wi-Fi networking and uh, wireless clients themselves are obviously at the very edge of our network in the same way that you've got a laptop or um, similar device plugged into an edge switch but uh, wireless clients actually use a wireless connection to talk back to uh, a wireless access point uh, which is uh, an extension of the edge switches uh, in our network and obviously they're using radio signals to uh, carry user data between the wireless client and the wireless access point rather than using uh, electrical signals which we'd normally use on a wired connection. So in simple terms we can compare uh, a wireless client to uh, an Ethernet client if you like uh, with a standard wired Ethernet client uh, it plugs via wireless connection using an 802.3 layer 2 connection into the edge switch but for a wireless client we've actually got a wireless connection we still connect across uh, layer 2 but we're using an 802.11 uh, connection so we're still effectively plugging in but it's more of a logical association with the wireless network rather than a, a physical cabled connection all wireless clients to be wireless clients must have two major RF components that's two major radio frequency components they must have a, uh, a radio which allows them to transmit and receive signals and they have uh, one or more antennas uh, which allow them to propagate uh, RF signals through the air to access points and other stations um, although they all have the common components, the actual capabilities of a client may vary considerably. Um, this may vary due to things like power constraints, how much, uh, how much battery power they can provide. Obviously, in smaller form factors, devices like smartphones, you're going to have far less uh, battery power than you're available than you will, uh, say, in a uh, laptop which has got a much larger battery so the actual power levels that they can transmit on and the amount of time they can transmit for will be constrained in, in smaller devices uh, and also how well uh, a device can actually hear signals from the wireless network so how well a smartphone can hear uh, a wireless access point compared to maybe uh, a laptop which has got a much much larger antenna it's, it's very much dependent on the uh, size and the number and the type of antennas that each client has got so the capabilities based on these various physical attributes 
uh, can vary enormously as well. And the uh, final consideration in terms of uh, capabilities is which uh, version of the 802.11 standard uh, the client actually supports. Uh, you may be familiar with um, the various standard amendments that have been out. You may have heard of 802.11g, 802.11n, maybe 802.11ac. And we'll explore these more in, uh, in more detail at a later stage. But uh, dependent on the standard amendments that a client supports, will determine the speeds that it is capable uh, of supporting. So uh, we'll take a little bit more uh, of a look at wireless clients in a, a later episode. That's just a very high level view of uh, wireless clients, what they are and, uh, and what they do for us in the network. The thing we're going to move on to next is uh, wireless access points. This is the second major component of a uh, wireless network. And in the slides, if you look at uh, slide number 15, I've actually posted uh, some pictures of uh, some enterprise level uh, access points that you, you may or may not have seen before. You may have seen something similar hanging on the ceiling of uh, the place where you work or learn. And um, generally, most wireless access points, in case you don't have a uh, sight of the slides at the moment, they tend to be um, usually uh, square, rectangular, uh, maybe uh, circular devices, usually about seven to eight inches across. Uh, usually white in colour, maybe cream coloured, and you often see them nestling on the ceiling of, uh, of buildings looking very much like smoke detectors with flashing lights on the front uh, quite a lot of the time. So you've probably seen uh, something similar, maybe sometimes have some with antennas hanging down as well, looking like huge spiders hanging from the ceiling. But uh, yeah, if you have a look on slide 15, you can get uh, an idea of what a, a access point uh, physically looks like uh, in an enterprise environment typically. And in terms of considering the function of an access point, the way it operates, um, the way to think of an access point is to think of a device which is split into two halves. On one side, we've got the wireless uh, components, which tends to be uh, typically radio and antenna. There are other also, also other uh, components such as um, signal processing and a whole host of electronics, but the main components to consider are the radio and the antenna. Uh, so you've got the wireless side of the access point and then on the wired side uh, which is which connects us into this extended edge that we've been talking about it typically connects into a uh, edge um, edge switch port we've got the the wired side of the access point so we've got a wireless side and a wired side and the primary job of the access point is to convert radio signals, radio frequency signals, which are carrying data from our clients, which we've already talked about, and the um, radio frequency signals are received by the antenna and the radio of the wireless access point, and then the access point converts those from radio signals into electrical signals, which we can uh, put onto uh, a wired network, typically Ethernet um, ports that we connect the access point into. So you can effectively think of the wireless access point as a, a bridge, almost a layer two bridge between wired data and wireless data and vice versa, wireless data uh, back to wired data. So we take RF data coming in, convert it from 802.11 frames, if you remember, uh, Wi-Fi networks based on the 802.11 standard, which has got its own framing technique in the same as 802.3 has. So we convert from 802.11 frames on the wireless side to 802.3 frames on the wired side. Uh, and that effectively bridges our wireless data onto our wired network. In the same way that our wireless clients had two major RF components, which were the radio and the antennas, we have the same arrangement in a wireless access point. We usually have uh, at least two radios and we usually have between two and four uh, antennas. The two radios are actually required because Wi-Fi networks actually support two radio frequency bands. And we'll discuss this more in a lot more detail later on. But just for your information at the moment, you normally have one radio which is assigned to the 2.4 gigahertz band and you have one radio which tends to be assigned to the 5 gigahertz band. So we've got two available bands to use, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and one radio is assigned to each band. And also on the antenna side of things, we have between uh, two and four antennas. These antennas 
uh, may be internal, they may be uh, hidden under the main chassis of the uh, wireless access point, you don't actually get to see them. Uh, and uh, sometimes they may be external antennas and you quite often see uh, maybe you know antennas hanging down from uh, a wireless access point and they can also be cabled uh, via coaxial cables away to um, to a separate antenna array but uh, we always have to have the the radio and the antenna even if you can't see the antennas they are there under the hood of the access point so to speak and uh, we tend to have uh, in the same way that we have two radios for two different bands we tend to have antennas which are dedicated to the two bands so we'll maybe have a couple of antennas dedicated to the 2.4 gigahertz band and a couple of antennas dedicated to the 5 gigahertz band in more modern designs there are actually um, multifunction uh, antennas which are coming into use which will actually be assigned to both bands simultaneously they've got some clever electronics in there to make, mean that they can operate on both bands simultaneously okay and generally with the wireless access points uh, you, you will see them sprinkled liberally around a facility so you'll see them attached to walls maybe uh, attached to suspended ceilings and they will uh, be um, installed throughout the areas where wireless LAN coverage is required uh, for users who need to use the uh, wireless LAN with their wireless clients. You may be wondering why we can't just put one uh, big access point in the middle of a building. I mean we are using wireless signals after all. It would seem fairly logical. You could just put an access point in the middle of a building, crank up the power and uh, get it to provide all of the wireless connectivity that you uh, you need for your users. Unfortunately it doesn't actually quite work like that. RF or radio frequency signals, especially at the frequencies uh, that we use for Wi-Fi networks are very similar to the the properties of light. If you imagine uh, maybe a carbon filament lamp that's hanging from the ceiling and uh, you, uh, you've got the lamp switched on, you're standing in a, a room, you can actually see uh, the uh, radiation, the light radiation from the lamp as you move around the room. But if you go into the next room, there's a solid wall separating yourself from that lamp you can no longer see the light from the, uh, the the lamp that's hanging from the ceiling next door and um, radio uh, frequency signals share very similar properties to light and in the same way that light is blocked uh, or, or maybe attenuated it's reduced in power by various obstructions such as windows doors uh, solid walls uh, we get the same effect with radio frequency signals so if you put um, an access a wireless access point in a room um, you may get a certain amount of radio frequency bleed through the the walls into surrounding rooms but um, it's certainly going to be uh, reduced in level it's attenuated by quite a considerable amount and the further away you move from the access point into adjacent rooms uh, you pretty soon have no signal at all so we have to provide uh, wireless access points to provide RF pools of RF coverage if you like in each area if you think of, think of the uh, the analogy of the uh, lamp uh, the light fitting hanging from the ceiling providing light and imagine we have to provide pools of coverage pools of light if you like in um, in many of our rooms and so we have to uh, install wireless access points throughout the building to provide these pools of coverage we sometimes call them cells as well cells of coverage this allows users to maintain wireless connectivity as they move from room to room within a facility well I see we're coming up to around about the 20 minute mark in this particular episode so I'm going to uh, leave this particular discussion there we've still got uh, a few more topics to discuss in this first module where we're talking about the uh, the basics of what we mean by a Wi-Fi network so we'll hopefully finish that off in the next episode and do a review of the uh, various topics that we've covered just want to remind you if you'd like to find out more about uh, the podcast series or about Wi-Fi networking in general uh, get yourself along to wififorbeginners.com that's the website for this podcast and you can find out more uh, about the topics we've spoken about see the slide sets uh, see some practice tests and see some recommendations for books web websites, blogs and other resources where you can enhance your knowledge of Wi-Fi networking. So thanks for joining me. I look forward to joining you again soon for episode three of the Wi-Fi for Beginners podcast.